It's from the Seven Steps to the Temple of Light, written by Yoranda. Chapter Seven, Love, Part One. Love is the power of the Wonderful One, and in it is the creative essence. Love is the fire of fusion, whereby the outer self is uplifted into oneness with the master within. Love cannot be engendered by the outer intellect. And he who seeks the realms of light through the self-activity of the intellect is bound to fail. The great commandment is, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Mark 1230. The Lord thy God is the wonderful one within you. And when your love for him is complete, so that you love him with all of your whole outer being, you will instantly find yourself dwelling in his presence. He who is like unto the people of the world spends the greater portion of his strength in loving material things. All day long, he works and strives for that which he loves. For his first love is for his body, that it may have food to eat and clothing to put on. And his second love is for his family, that through them his love for things physical may be more fully satisfied. And his third love is for various kinds of display and fame as they may be made manifest in material things. And after all this, he has an intellectual idea that he loves God. Such a one spends his whole time trying to satisfy the desires of the body, which he loves so much. And in the end, he finds that his reward is death. As long as a man continues to give first attention to his love for himself, he cannot know the love of the Lord within himself. And he shall find that the buffetings of life shall continue to torment him day and night. As long as he follows after the dictates of the devil of his own outer mind. Until a man knows and lives this first commandment, he knows not the second, which relates to loving others. Until a man abides in the spirit of this first commandment, he dwells in hatred, envies, strife, lack, and limitation, and the end thereof is death. He who says, I have to make a living, and I have no time to waste in trying to let God do anything. Is thereby saying, I love myself and material things so much that I have no room left in which to love God. In his ignorance, such a one imagines that to love God, it is necessary to forget all material things and to withdraw into the life of a worthless recluse. The blessed one who has entered in knows, and knows that he knows, that he who loves the Lord his God with all of his whole being, first, last, and always, is he who is more active than ever before. For every instant is filled with glorious adventures and radiating love. He knows that he has wisdom and strength for every occasion, and that he can experience no lack or limitation. He it is who knows 
how to truly enjoy all the material things that come into his life. And his whole being is filled with rejoicing and gladness. Such a one knows that love is as firm and undeviating as it is gentle. He knows that love is as bold and courageous as it is ready to serve in true service. 